Okay, welcome to the Brilliant Women in E-Commerce series of interviews as part of International Women's Day 2023 with the theme Embrace Equity. My name is Emma Bagley. I'm your host. I'm also the founder of Zeal, a digital marketing agency specializing in Amazon. I'm really excited to be interviewing Regina Peterbursky today, all the way from Australia. It's very early in the morning in Australia at the moment. Um, Regina is an inspiration to me and that's one of the reasons I got into the world of Amazon. She's a private label, she's a very successful private label seller, coach, podcast host, crypto queen on the side, and most recently has taken up a new post at Fortunet, an e-commerce investment bank, helping seller, Amazon sellers to get more for their business and realize their financial goals. So welcome, Regina. Was that an okay introduction? Did I cover everything? That's 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 perfect and more than I could have written myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, uh, thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a pleasure and an honour to to be here with you. And yes, it is early in the morning here. It is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm on my first coffee still. <laughs> oh, enjoy, enjoy. Okay, so we've got a series of interview questions and. Um, Really, really looking forward to hearing more about your inspirational and entrepreneurial career to date and what you have planned for the future. So the first question, obviously, as part of International Women's Day, the theme is embrace equity. So can you please tell me what you feel is, what does embrace equity mean to you? And can you share with me any particular story or you know part of your entrepreneurial journey where you have perhaps faced adversity because of your gender? Oh, um, look, embracing equity, it, it's, that's such a, a, a tough, tough um, subject. You know, I, I think, you know, women, you know, I think I'm a little bit older than you, uh, you know, and growing up, you know, I always felt, um, you know, I never felt discriminated against until I was. Um, and the story uh, that I have was when I was, you know, quite young, I think like 20, 21, and I was going for a position in a retail store, in a shoe retail store. And mm -hmm. it was actually via, you know, through a recruitment company. And so the recruiter, you know, set me out for the interview. I did the interview and it was like a, a family business, but, but a retail business. And I was going for all like a traineeship. So it wasn't a senior role, you know, I was 20. Mm -hmm. It was like a, a foot in the door, you know, so to speak, in a shoe store. Um, and I had the interview, which I think went beautifully, and um, and I didn't get the job, and I was like really quite upset. And I rang the recruiter and I said, you know, what, um, you know, what happened? I thought it was really good, and I really wanted the job. And he said, oh look, Regina, I'm really sorry, but the owner's wife didn't trust that he Ooh. would be able to work with you because you're so young and beautiful. And incredible. How did you respond to that? I, well, I I was like shocked you know it's like it, it would never have entered my mind that that would be something now of course today if a recruiter said that to me you know i'd take him straight to the equal opportunities board and you know, <laughs> uh, it's illegal to do that right but you know we're talking quite a long time ago now mm -hmm. um where you know that was a, quite a valid excuse for not giving somebody a job was they were too pretty right i mean <laughs> you'd think in a retail environment that would be a good thing right yes. But um, so, so that's sort of, uh, um, you know, the most blatant experience that I've personally had. Um, in the e-commerce space, what I've, uh, what I've found and, and the reason that I started my podcast, which is called Women on Amazon, was that I was going to numerous events where in the audience, you know, the e-com and the Amazon space, there are actually a lot of women working in the space. Uh, because it's a it's a great business um, model for our lifestyles. So not not only were there couples, you know, husband and wife teams, but also a lot of women on their own, like myself. So I would go to these events, and the the makeup of the audience was about you know maybe thirty thirty five percent women, if not more in some cases. However, on stages we were lucky to see you know ten percent, if we you know if that. So, so I think, and, and, and that's still happening to this day, you know, there's an event, you know, big Amazon seller event that's coming up later this year, which I shall, won't name and shame, but I have publicly already on their Facebook page uh, where they're releasing, they're releasing their speaker lineup 
And, you know, I'm constantly commenting with things like, you know, hey, you know, this is all, you know, white guys. Where are the women? Where's the diversity? Because, you know, for me, when I started this Amazon journey, I was actually inspired by Kirsty Verity. Oh, yes. I saw her. I saw her speak mm-hmm. uh, on a stage and she was the inspiration for me. And I think that's what, you know, we need more of that across all spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that, that that's my little thing at the moment is getting more women, you know, in speaking roles and, you know, being invited to speak, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and on the other uh, end of the spectrum, I've spoken to event organisers when I've asked them, so like, hey, how come you don't have more women on your stages? And I've had them come back to me and said, look, we invite them, but for various reasons, they can't travel, they don't want to travel, they're too shy, they don't want to speak. So so it's, so it's a double-edged sword. You know, we want more women to come and the organisers, you know, some of the organisers really do make an effort to invite women, but a lot of the women themselves are not stepping up. So we also need women to be more confident and step up and believe that they deserve to be on those, those stages. Yeah, it comes so, to so, so the equity has got to come from both sides. Both sides, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's self-belief as well. Do you, you know, imposter syndrome, I'm sure we'll talk about the yeah. in the interview today, but I, I do think imposter syndrome is really real for, for women in particular. And um, oh, that's what oh, oh, it is. Super- it, it is. And, and I think, you know, ingrained, and it's a very deep subconscious mm. ingraining in our culture where women, we feel we've got to be perfect before we're able to sort of um, step up Yes. And and say our truth, whereas you know, unfortunately, men, you know, they they can you know read a book and all of a sudden they're an expert, right? Uh, <laughs> but there there seems to, there doesn't seem to be that self deprecation that we have, you know, that that confidence that that I think women need to really own more. They need to own their power, own their knowledge, and be confident in and standing up and speaking up. So, have you always been more naturally? confidence um so you're obviously your journey which we'll talk about but becoming a podcast host coach you've been a speaker as well where is that confidence come yeah. from or was that kind of come from deep you know you know from many years ago if it was growing up how how, how- God, uh, yeah look I, I don't know i don't know where it's where it's come from i think i have always had it to a degree mm-hmm. um you know i come from um you know a, a refugee family we left the ukraine you know, it's a topical subject. We left the Ukraine when I was a child. Um, English is technically my second language. Um, so when I first went to schooling uh, in New Zealand in primary school, you know, I, I was very confused, didn't know, and, and I think I just needed to make my voice heard. Mm-hmm. Um, so once I sort of got the language, I, I, I started speaking. I was still quite shy, you know, was that, that sort of ugly duckling syndrome in, in high school. I got teased a lot you know, for my name, for my accent. Um, and then once I sort of left high school and got into the workforce, um, that that's, I think, when I started coming out and really just speaking my truth and not caring what other people thought. I think that that's always been my thing. I just don't care. Yeah. You know, the, my, my, my philosophy was always, you know, if I make a fool of myself in front of my friends and family, then they love me so it doesn't matter. Yeah. And if I make a fool of myself in front of strangers, then I'm not going to see them again. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? I like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so next question then about current projects. You, I think, have got a lot going on in your life. I've noticed as well that you're organizing a Bali mastermind retreat, which... <laughs> I am. I am. I am. I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of face-to-face learning from other people. And I think we need to get ourselves in into rooms with sellers. Sorry, I've got cats here fighting. Um, um, so, and when I first started, you know, I really made an effort and I was flying to America um, all the time to uh, to attend, you know, events and mastermind groups because that, that that's where you learn. You know, the, you know, e-commerce can be very lonely. Mm-hmm. You know, we're 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 sort of like sitting. You know, I don't know about you, but you know, at our dining room tables or yeah, our yeah. offices. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, working away, and it can be really lonely. And we can get into our heads, mm-hmm. um, and so I think a sense of community um, is really important. And you know, especially after what's been going on the last three years. And and I'm from Melbourne. We had the worst lockdowns in the world. <laughs> you know, that really affected us. So, 
So last year, myself, along with my business partner uh, in this project, Chris Thomas, uh, we, we started, um, the, you know, here in Melbourne, these masterminds um, for, you know, six, seven and eight figure sellers. So so not not for beginners, but mm-hmm. for people who are experienced because it's a different conversation at that level mm-hmm. where we basically get, you know, 25, 30 people together in a room, lock the doors, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> in uh, Bali, how awful. Well, it wouldn't be land to near the site, I suppose, in Bali. That, that, that's right. And so so this next one, so we have one coming up in June, mm-hmm. and it is in Bali, so it's going to be a little bit more conducive. It's a little bit longer. It's it's uh, four days, um, and we'll be mixing it up with, you know, locking people in a room plus, you know, a little bit of by the pool, and we've got some adventures happening. But it's all about, you know, they, they, they say you're only as good as the, the five people that are closest to you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So if you can put yourself in a room with people – you know, smarter than yourself or as smart, um, then you're going to be able to improve your business. And we've got some amazing international guests coming this time, including, as I said, my inspiration, Kirsty Verity is coming. Mm -hmm. And for her, it's going to be her her 10-year anniversary of starting her Amazon business, which she started in Bali. So it's going to be a nice little circle. So Kirsty is coming. Uh, One of my favourite people in this space, um, Steve Simonson, the true gentleman of, of e-commerce um, is coming. Um, Leo Scovio, who, you know, what he doesn't know about the latest ranking techniques is not worth knowing. Um, also, Bradley Sutton from Helium 10. Uh, everybody knows awesome. Bradley. <laughs> and everybody knows Bradley. Uh-huh. So so we've got some amazing um, uh, VIP speakers, but also um, just as important are uh, the other sellers who are in their own mm-hmm. because it's those conversations that you have over breakfast, lunch, dinner, sitting next to somebody um, where you just don't know what's going to come off. And funnily enough, all of the guests that are, that are coming are coming because I met them at events that I went to and was able to form bonds and friendships. So, um, you know, it's really important because you just never know who you're going to meet and how important they're going to be in your life, you know, moving forward. So, so I'm a huge proponent of these events and so – I decided that, again, because most of these things are happening in America, that it's time we had one, you know, on our side of the world. Um, so as we've done them in Australia. This year we're doing it in, in Bali. So if anybody's interested, um, you know, re- reach out and uh, So there's still we'll space available, is there? We, we have got, you know, limited spaces, but at the moment there are still places available uh, mm-hmm. for the right it's seller. Have an R8 seller, bigger seller. Yes, yes. So, so, so not a beginner. You know, we're, no. we're looking for people who had some experience, um, who are able to bring something to the table as well that they've learnt. Yeah, it's a, it's a two-way street. You know, it's a true mastermind, not a um, not in a, a event where you're in a classroom learning just just learning. You're actually we want people to, to be able to contribute as well. So whether they've you know made lots of mistakes or they've had success in a particular marketplace. You know, we've got one seller who's coming who's a really young seller um, who's only making sort of just making six figures, but all of those six figures are in the Australian marketplace, which is amazing, you know, because mm-hmm. the Australian marketplace is really small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, are, so they are, Australian? are they Australian? Are they Australian? Yeah, well? Australian, yeah, yeah. yeah. Australian seller who's got his family business products onto the Australian marketplace and is making, you know, uh, yeah, good six figures just just in Australia, which is amazing. So I want to hear what he's got to say about the Australian yeah. marketplace and what, and what, he, what he's doing, right? And I'm sure there'll be other sellers who, who want to hear that. So, you know, we've got other people who, who you know, do stuff in um, uh, off Amazon um, mm-hmm. and are integrating, you know, multi-channel uh, things. So so it's a really nice sort of we, – we try and get a mix of people – who have something to to share as well as something to learn. 